Hello, this is a tutorial looking at the creation of a figure for a paper or for a lab report using the raw data from lab chart for Mac. Of course, this will also work in lab chart for PC, but since lab chart for PC users can copy the image from the zoom window and then annotate and edit elsewhere, whereas those who use the Mac can't, I thought I'd just create this uh, quick workflow. Of course, I've already shown on another tutorial how you go about exporting raw data from LabChart, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we will do that again, and I'll go through it again so we can follow properly the workflow. So, of course, we've selected some data on the screen that we want to present in our lab report. We have some Finipress data, which you can see is a little bit noisy, a bit spiky, and we've got some nice clean uh, oxygen percentage readings taken through a uh, spirometry uh, unit. Um, I can click on the zoom window up here and view them as separate tracks and this is the kind of image I am trying to produce. A, a nice clean image showing scales up the left hand side, a time scale in the bottom axis and our data on the screen. So Going from the uh, data on the screen, the simple thing to do first is export the data as text files, as individual data points to then import into Excel. So we go to the file menu and choose save selection because we have selected 10 seconds of recording and we choose the format as chart data. I'm going to call this selection 2 txt as chart data and press save and by pressing save it'll bring up a new option box that you may not have seen before which gives you the options of which channels to record you can see we've automatically selected one and six because they are the channels that I've selected in our chart I also want to include time I don't want to include comments and I want to have a time scale in seconds and in the reduction window I click one I don't want to reduce anything. One sample needs to be saved as one data point. So this recording was made at one kilohertz, so I'm going to be recording a thousand samples per second. So I press OK. Now that's saved on my desktop, so I can go into Microsoft Excel, I can go to the file menu and choose import, and I choose a text file and click import. Selection 2 is on my screen, so there it is, and I press Get Data. Upon opening the file, Excel will bring up this text import wizard, which has a number of steps. We want to make sure that the file is delimited. In other words, there are boundaries between each of the data sets, and in this case, it's tab delimited, and we just say delimited. We choose Next, and we tell it that it is tab delimited. Some data may be semicolon, comma, or other, but we just choose tab and press next. We don't need to worry about any of the advanced settings. We can just click finish here and you can see here in the window below our data are saved correctly and we press finish. Where do we want this file? Well, we can have it in the existing sheet, so I'll click OK and there it's pasted the data you can see into our existing sheet and if you look all the way down it goes down a very long way. We should have about 10,000 data points. There we are, 10,000 exactly. So, first thing I will do is just make sure I know what's going on with these data. The first column is the time, the second column is our blood pressure, and the third column is our percentage of oxygen in our breathing circuit. So, I will first of all insert a line at the top and just call this one time and this is going to be in seconds. The second one is going to be uh, BP, blood pressure, and the third one, O2, just so I remember what's going on. And then we need to start plotting these as graphs. So I'm gonna select column A, which is our time. Pressing the command key, I'm gonna choose our blood pressure trace. Go to charts, choose scatter. This is not a line graph, of course, it's a scatter graph because it is relative to a time and we're going to choose a straight lined scatter. And there we have our blood pressure trace. I will leave that as it is on the screen. You can see it requires a little bit of editing. But now we'll create a second graph, which is time 
versus our O2, and we choose again a straight line. And there we are, two little graphs on the screen showing O2 and BP. So before we start editing these graphs, it's important now to realize what's going on here. These data clearly start at uh, 377.720 uh, seconds, which is wrong. We want it to start at zero, of course, so it looks a lot nicer on our scale. So we can click on the first character up at the top here, press the command and the shift button simultaneously, and then the down arrow, and that'll select all of that column of data. Now we can go up to um, the insert um, Now we can go up to the edit window and use the fill command and choose a series. This will fill a series of numbers into this little row here to correspond to the new timing. So we'll start our value at zero and our step value will be 0 0.001. That's one millisecond and we press OK. Okay, so now we have our graphs on the screen here. We want to fill this time in so it starts at zero. So if I type in 0, 0.000 in the window here, you can see already our graphs have gone a bit squiffy. But what we can do now is select down all of our data by pressing the command and the shift key simultaneously. We go to the edit window and choose fill series. And now we want to do a fill down this from zero all the way down to 10 seconds in millisecond intervals. So I put my step value as 0.001. It's a linear curve and I press OK. And you can see because I'd entered zero in the top here, it's filled our data and it ends at 10. So now we can ignore these data and concentrate on our graphs. So the first thing we need to do is a little bit of housekeeping. We can remove the legend that uh, Microsoft Excel puts on every graph. We can remove the title as well of every graph. Uh, we can add a um, y-axis and an x-axis. We go to axis labels and add this. And this can be blood pressure in millimeters of mercury. And we can do the same for our second graph. Add a vertical axis and call this... Um, 02 in percent. I'm not going to worry about doing a superscript 2 at this stage. Um, I can rescale these lines because um, we want to make these look like they were captured data so we don't have to worry about a lot of the um, hidden information so we can scale that to 100 and we can scale this one uh, for a minimum let's say 10 and let's go to a maximum 22 and let's actually take that to 12 and go 22. And that looks nice, that looks like some nice raw data. Of course, this we want to go to 10, so we can double click on our x-axis and put 10 for both of these as well. You remember in lab chart, we don't want to see both axes, we only want to see the axis of the one on the bottom. So now we can click on the top and delete that axis by pressing the delete key. And you'll see now that we've got no axis on the x-axis and it nicely lines up with our other, other picture. So we can just um, align them just roughly on the screen and we can stretch them so they look uh, much wider so they fill the, the page a little bit better. Uh, these are graphic objects in Excel so we can select both of them now and we can do everything else we can do with pictures in the format menu. We can align them left for instance so they're nicely lined up and we can just stretch this one a little tiny bit so it fills fills the screen nicely, there we are. So I'm quite happy with them. I've got a few things to do, like resize uh, this. There we are. I'm going to push my O2 across a little bit so it looks a bit neater, there we are. Now we want to increase the size of the fonts and add an x-axis label. So we'll add an x-axis label first, going to the title axis, horizontal, below, and we will call this time in seconds. Now we may make this one a little bit bigger and squash that a little bit to make a bit more space. That looks nice. So the scale's looking good. We can make this all a little bit bigger now by clicking on the whole graph, going to the home and increasing the font 
I'm going to increase it by four clicks. And the same with this one. That's all looking a lot nicer now. Um, so I may just expand this a little bit so it fills. There we go. That looks really quite nice. Okay, so some things that are going on here we don't want. We don't want this outline on both of these graphs. So I'm going to click on the graph again, go to the format, choose line, no line, and the same with the second graph. Of course, you can have as many graphs as you like here. We just chose two data sets. Makes life a little bit easier. And because I quite like the graticule that you see in lab chart, if you remember when you zoom in on data, I'll show you here, we get this little orange graticule. It's actually quite pleasing to look at and gives you an idea of changes in scale. So back in Excel, we have that option in the chart layout. We can choose grid lines and we can put vertical grid lines in both of these two. Um, so for instance here, I'm going to put vertical grid lines in the major axis. You can, of course, now select these grid lines and you can choose to have them in different colors. Um, I may do that just to show you in this first one. We choose the line and let's just choose a nice orange color. It'll warn you a couple of times that it's going to take a long time to redraw the screen, but don't worry about that. It doesn't actually take very long at all. So we'll choose those. They look quite nice. And I'll also choose them so they are dashed. And once you've done one thing in Excel, of course, you can repeat it by pressing Command Y. And you can see here, it's very easy just to go into the other graph and repeat the changes we've made. Yeah, I like them. And choose the line color as orange so it matches what we've seen in the previous in lab chart. So now we have a figure that actually looks very much like the lab chart data window that we saw. Um, we can color our lines so that they look a little bit more like a chart recording. Let's make this one blue. We can move them together a little bit closer together so they look like they're part of the same image. Select them both. And because these are graphical objects, we go to our format and we can group them together. So there's my raw data image. You can, of course, annotate this in any way you like with other labels, but I'm just going to click on it, press Command C for copy, open up a copy of Word, and I'm going to paste my picture into Word using the Edit Paste Special as a PDF. It's very important you paste as a PDF. If you paste as a picture, I'll show you, it looks a little bit fuzzy. I'll paste underneath it as a PDF, and you'll see paste underneath as a PDF there. And you'll notice that the image is a little bit clearer, a bit fuzzy at the top, much clearer in the bottom, so I'll delete the fuzzy one. And there we are. There is an annotated raw data trace in Word ready for your reports. I hope this helps.